السلام علیکم ڈیئر برادرس اینڈ سسٹرس دعا اور سپلیکیشن از این امپورٹنٹ پارٹ آف آور فیتھ اللہ سبحان تعالیٰ ہیز گرانٹیڈ از دی گفٹ آف انوکنگ ہیم ان ٹائمس آف نیڈ اللہ المائٹی سیز ان دا ہولی قرآن وین مائی سروینس آسک یو کنسرننگ می ٹیل دم آئی ایم ان ڈیڈ کلوز ٹو دم I listen to the prayer of every suppliant when he calls on me. So, with this verse we can say that Allah Almighty listens to us when we make dua. We should always seek help from Allah. But sometimes we keep on praying for something and we seem to get no response. We become disheartened and stop supplicating. And often times we start thinking, Allah is all seeing, all hearing, so why doesn't He listen to me? Can't He see the pain I am in? Shaitan keeps pouring such thoughts into our brains and we become distant from Allah Almighty while dua should be a source of keeping the supplicant closer to Allah. So why does this happen? When we make dua sometimes they are accepted and other times they are not or getting no response immediately etc. Let's listen to Shaykh Omar Sulaiman and Mufti Menke in this regard. Jazakallah khair. When is the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala going to come? And particularly in the context of the ayah, do you think that you'll enter into Jannah? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes us through the various difficulties and to the point where the messenger and the believers that are with him say, when is the help of Allah? And verily the help of Allah is near. And I wanted to speak about this from a personal perspective in the sense that how do we deal with the question of when, meaning when I make dua, when is it going to be answered, uh, you know, with our individual struggles and not necessarily the community struggles, since that ayah was in the context of Khandaq. And obviously, these things are all uh, tied together. And subhanAllah, they even touch on different elements of faith. They touch on different aspects of our creed. If a person is in a situation where they're seeing a wicked person who seems to have everything in this world, and then a person who is righteous and they are being oppressed uh, or they don't have anything in this world, then that can start to, uh, to, to uh, ruin their notions of how they understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's love and how they understand the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala proportions his mercy in this world in relation to the next. And so when it comes to dua, when it comes to supplication and a person that makes dua, you know, I want to actually start with what Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu said. He said, I do not concern myself with the burden of the answer to my dua. But he says, I just concern myself with the ability to make dua. So I don't concern myself with the answer to the dua. I just concern myself with the ability to make the dua, with the ability to make that supplication in the first place. Why? Because as Ibn Atta'ah said, know that any time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows your tongue to move in asking him something, that that means he wants to give you something. And so there is no situation in which Allah will give you tawfiq, will give you success to be able to make this dua, except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to answer that dua for you. So don't, you know, concern yourself with the way that it's going to be answered. Just concern yourself with the ability to make that dua in the first place. And that is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you are driven to the ability to call upon Him. Now, with that being said, you make your dua. And as you supplicate, your supplication goes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al-Alim, Al-Khabir, the most knowing, the most acquainted, Al-Hakim, the most wise, Al-Rahman, the most merciful. It goes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you have entrusted that supplication now to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for Allah to answer you in a way that is best for you. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would either answer that dua as you asked him for it, or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will block an evil, an equivalent evil, a calamity as a result of that dua, or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will delay the answer to that dua to the hereafter, to the day of judgment. And of course, on that day when you are rewarded, it is unlike the reward of this world. And a person would not would, would wish that none of their du'as had the answer in this world when they see the answer in the hereafter. 
because that which was answered in this world perished along with this world, whereas that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers in regards to the hereafter or in the hereafter remains for all of eternity. So you make that dua and you entrust that dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one that you're calling upon, to answer it in a way that's best for you. Now the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer every one of you so long as you don't become hasty. How do you become hasty? That a person would say, I called upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he did not answer me. So long as a person does not say, I called upon Allah and he did not answer me. In another narration, the Prophet ﷺ said uh, that a person would call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for something sinful or with the severance of family ties. So that the nature of what you're asking Allah for is forbidden. Uh, but in this regard, you've asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have taken all of the precautions and fulfilled all of the prerequisites to approaching Allah with that dua. Do not say, I called upon Allah and he didn't answer me. He did not answer my dua. When you do that, no matter how the dua has transferred, it's left your heart, it's left your tongue, it has gone to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu said, your Lord is too shy for you to raise your hands and for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow those hands to come back down completely empty and unfulfilled. Allah is too shy. Allah is too shy, subhanAllah. He's too shy for you to make dua and to come back empty handed. So you made that dua and you sent it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then you say, I called upon Allah and he did not answer me. At that point, no matter how the dua is operating, it becomes completely irrelevant and it becomes completely ineffective. It ruins the dua, it spoils the dua because you lose the essential component of trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as you're making that dua. So the Prophet ﷺ said, do not be hasty and say, I called upon Allah and he didn't answer me. And another thing that's really important about this is subhanAllah to not let the shaitan tell you that the delay in the answer to your dua is some indication of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not loving you. You know, think about this. Who was more beloved to Allah than the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Who does Allah love more than the Prophets, than Ibrahim alayhi salam, than Yusuf alayhi salam, than Ya'qub alayhi salam, right? We're talking about Abraham and Jacob and Joseph and Ayyub alayhi salam, Job. Who does Allah love more than these people, than the Prophets of Allah? Yet how many times do we see that they called upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the answer to their dua did not come for decades, did not come for decades? Is that because Allah did not love them? Of course not. You know, we would never say that because we know that this is the most beloved of Allah's creation to him, right? Of course not. But it's something else. It's something else. And so it might be that you see two people that make dua and this person is answered right away and the other person is delayed and Allah loves the one who was delayed more. Allah loves the one who was delayed more. Why? Because it may be that subhanAllah, as you are turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in dua, that Allah is increasing you. And He certainly is when you turn towards Him. Allah is increasing you in His favor, in His love. Allah is increasing you in your good deeds. Allah is elevating your status in the hereafter. Because a dua wal ibadah, dua is worship. And so all that you are gaining aside from what you are specifically asking for, in the process of that dua is certainly increasing you in Allah's love, is certainly increasing you in Allah's love. And what more could you want than that, right? What is greater than that? As you're going to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is increasing you in His love, as well as, as well as responding to you in a way that is most befitting to you. And subhanAllah, that is a precious, jewel that you know that that we take every time we turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in dua aside from whatever it is that we're asking from him the inkisar the brokenness that we show to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the humility that we show to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the waking up at night to pray for what we're praying for right in in the last third of the night or whenever it is all of that is bringing us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and closeness to Allah is greater than whatever it is that we're asking him for
So the Prophet ﷺ said, do not be amongst those people that send a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is too shy to reject it, but then they render that dua ineffective themselves by closing the possibility, by saying that that dua is not going to be answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that dua has not been answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once you make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, leave the answer to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And again, imagine on the day of judgment, those du'as that Allah delayed for you to answer you there and to give you a bounty that was too great for this world and to give you in a place that is everlasting rather than a place that is temporary. And he says, SubhanAllah, this was greater than whatever it is that I could have wanted in this dunya. And the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is certainty and elevation, whether it is in this life or the next. So again, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, I called upon Allah and he did not answer me. Whether it was Musa alayhi salam making dua against the Fir'aun or the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam against his enemies or the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam for the guidance of certain people in Uhud or the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam asking Allah for relief or Ayyub alayhi salam calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or Ya'qub alayhi salam calling upon Allah waiting for his son, or Yusuf alayhi salam calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala waiting for relief from the prison, or whatever situation he was in. All of these situations teach us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer the dua of the one that he loves, but on a time and in a way that is most befitting to that love and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-wadud knows what's best for us so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst those that are beloved to him and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst those that are always turned back to him in dua in a state of brokenness and humility and in a way in which we are always elevated in this life and in the next may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gather us with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Jannah al-Firdaus Allahumma ameen Assalamu alaykum Every dua, supplication or prayer you make is heard by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no doubt. He knows us better than we know ourselves. If we're asking for something that he knows is very detrimental for us in the future, you desperately want to marry someone and Allah knows that something really bad is going to happen afterwards. He may save you from it by answering your prayer by not giving you what you want simply because he loves you more than you love yourself. Subhanallah, that is something amazing. The moment you understand this, you will understand the Almighty says to us, I've always heard your dua, your supplication. I always answer it. I either give you what you want immediately. And that's obviously the best thing. That's what we all want. But Allah says, sometimes out of my mercy, I give you what you want but after some time. So he delays it to a better time. You may be desperately wanting something and Allah knows that it's good for you after two years, after five years, after 10 years. So he will give you exactly the same thing later on. Sometimes he will give it to you, but in the hereafter, subhanallah, if he knows that that is the best for you, sometimes the reward of the sabr and the patience you're going to go through is tremendous such that just the patience is enough to have booked you and reserved you a place in paradise. Then sometimes what Allah does when he knows that there is something for you better than what you're asking. He then gives you the thing which is better, even though in my small mind and yours, we may not understand how that was better for us. But remember, it's better in the, in the worldly life as well as in the hereafter. Fit dunya wal akhirah. So sometimes because we don't realize that what he has ultimately given us is better than what we desperately wanted. We don't see, we think he didn't answer, he didn't hear, he doesn't love us, he doesn't care for us. But Allah says, I know better than you. Allah knows and you don't know. Sometimes, like I say, if the Almighty knows you want to marry someone desperately, this is an example I'm going to use. For some reason, it's blocked. Every avenue you try, you just cannot get this happening. And so maybe Allah knows something in the future was going to happen. Maybe the person was going to pass away. Maybe the children that were going to come as a result of that type of a relationship might have been troublesome or they may have been challenged in one way or another, or you may not have had those kids. Allah knows best. I don't know. You don't know. So trust Allah. He knows at times he replaces what you want 
with something else in Jannatul Firdaus. So these are some of the ways that he responds to your dua, your prayer, but he definitely answers your prayer. What's your job? Your duty is to keep asking, keep nagging, keep repeating, repeat every day. He loves it when you repeat, Oh Allah, grant me. Oh Allah, you are most merciful. You know how to ask him? Let me explain. People say my dua is not answered. Number one, praise Allah. Number two, seek the forgiveness of Allah. Number three, send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad, peace be upon him, his family, his household, his companions. Number four, ask what you want in the most beautiful ways and ask in any language you want. Keep repeating it and express how desperately you want it. If you really shed a tear or two, it would help because subhanallah, Allah is very, very merciful. You know, when you shed a tear, subhanallah, it actually is another level of supplication. Then as you're ending your prayer, make sure you end it again with the blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu and perhaps some praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's how you ask Allah. And if you were to precede your supplication with a good deed, the chances of it being accepted are far more. If you were to precede it with a, a charity or fasting or salah or something good, recitation of the Quran, it would really be good. Then there are certain times that are better than other times. Get up at night when everyone is asleep and cry at the time of the Hajj at the time, the last third of the night, cry at that time, ask Allah because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that at that moment, he descends to the lowest heavens asking who is asking me that I can give them, who is repenting, that I can accept their repentance, who is seeking forgiveness so that I can forgive them. Then another very interesting thing that you need to do, my brothers and sisters, you need to be on the right page with Allah. If you're involved in a sin, try and cut it out. Cut out that sin for the sake of Allah. Seek forgiveness from it. If you are doing something wrong, improve your relationship with Allah and Allah will grant it to you. I know of many people who two years later, they say, Subhanallah, my prayers were answered in the best possible way. You're looking for a job. Never give up prayers. May Allah grant us our wishes. May Allah grant us the best of this world and the next. May Allah safeguard us from that which we are asking for, which we don't know is actually detrimental for us out of his mercy. May he keep it away from us and then may he make us happy with it. There is a supplication known as Dua Al-Istikhara. Wherein, if you were to read the meaning of it, you say, Oh Allah, if what I'm asking, you know, is good for me, my religion, my present, my future, my uh, hereafter, then let it happen for me, make it easy for me and grant me blessings in it. And if you know it is bad for me, my present, my current life, my my future, my hereafter, my deen, my religion and so on, my relationship with you, if you know it's bad for me, then Keep it away from me, keep me away from it, and then make me happy with your decree. Oh, that's an amazing supplication. I pray that we can learn from it. So don't give up, never lose hope. Understand the Almighty loves you much more than you love yourself. And he knows for a fact what's better for you. If you have a good relation with Allah, he'll always give you what's best. Be happy with what you have. Sometimes what you want is the worst thing you could have. Allah saves you from it through his mercy. Don't complain and don't blame him and don't be upset with him. Never. Oh Allah, grant us the ability to be pleased with your decree and decree for us that which is, which is the biggest blessing for us. Make it easy for us. Grant us our wish when you know it's best for us. Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters. Hope this video was helpful for you. This may help others too. So please consider sharing and we will bring more videos in the future. Inshallah. So consider subscribing and you won't miss any. Jazakallah khairan.